how do you defend the rights of animals? You don't call it rights. You don't call them. You you actually just use this. Well, let me start with this justice. <laughs> now, justice. You, most people would think that's for people. It's not for animals. Justice is about a political regime in which things can be just or unjust. How does that apply to peregrine falcons, whales, and and maybe amoebas? Well, okay. So justice, I, I do ultimately get, get to rights, but I start with the idea of justice. What is the intuitive idea of injustice? And as Aristotle says, the gods don't have a need for justice because they have whatever they want. They don't, don't have any bad efforts to try to get it. And I think our picture intuitively of injustice is you see something you want, you're trying to get it, and then you're blocked by something that is either negligent or willfully bad. And that happens to animals too. And uh, so for me, any animal that is sentient, that can, in other words, respond to the world, seeing something it wants and wanting to get it, any animal who has an internal vantage point on the world can be a subject of justice or injustice. Let's, let's, does, let's say, a fish that is swimming around and sees a predator or senses a predator and goes in the opposite direction, is that a similar thought to someone walking down a street seeing someone with a gun and walking to the other side of the street, or is it, is it a different experience? I mean, it strikes me that some of this is what we might call instinct that doesn't quite rise to the level of intelligence or of an of the kind of autonomous person that we would think of in in human terms tell me well, how you distinguish how, how where this fits in okay so what scientists have done is to distinguish what they and i call sentience that is roughly speaking there's someone at home inside there's a real person inside perceiving and feeling from other kinds of more rote-based interactions. Now, all animals have evolutionary mechanisms that cause them to avoid danger. But they need, in addition, for sentience to be there, they need it to be subjectively felt. And so the way scientists proceed is to do various experiments that would come out differently if the creature subjectively feels pain or if it doesn't. And there have been, well, we pretty much grant that all mammals are sentient in that way, and birds, the case has long ago been won. But with fish, there was a real controversy. So there's a, a wonderful book by Victoria Braithwaite called Do Fish Feel Pain, where she describes the very carefully designed experiments which show that the fish behave in a way that shows that they feel the pain. They don't just react auto automatically. Tell now, me, with, yeah, give me, give me an example of that exp an experiment that could show that because it's, I think it's in the in in this reading these experiments that I was like, oh, it was the actual process of the experiment that I found fascinating. Can you map that out? Because I I find it hard to think of a fish, a fish as having feelings or a subjective view of the world. It's just intuitively <laughs> difficult for me. They have perhaps a much simpler sentience, and I do think that's important. They don't have a sense of their own projects as evolving over time. But what she did was to give a, a painful stimulus, which is allowed in the lab because it's uh, just a weak pain. It's acetic acid. And then she watched what they did. Now, one thing she did was to set up in the research environment obstacles. And if they tried to avoid the obstacle but they didn't do it when they were anesthetized, and therefore the pain stimulus was taken away. Then that showed that it was the pain stimulus that made the difference. So, so there's lots of different variants of that. But, but that, to cut to the chase, the fact that we can actually give fish anesthesia so they don't feel pain, then we can see what the difference in behavior is between one and the other. Well, you notice that they've, oh, they've just felt a pain. Personally, they've subjectively yeah. felt that pain, and they are reacting yeah. to it. And yeah. that is, is your core to the definition of what you call sentience. Now, I say fish, but that means bony fish. Actually, sharks and the cartilaginous fish, it's much less clear that the jury is still out on that because they do things that are very hard to square with the subjective feeling of pain. For example, they cannibalize parts of their own bodies. So if their fin is wounded, they bite it off and, and, and they show no sign of distress in doing that. So there's still a lot of uncertainty and people are on both sides of that question. 
with crustaceans, most people think that there's no subjective feeling of pain. With insects, well, there's doubt about bees, but most other insects, they pretty well think they don't. Now, of course, insects still avoid danger, but that is pretty much automatic. 